toy time at home. Presented by Public Library of Cincinnati and Hamilton County. Hi, I'm John Lomax. I work with Channel 12. I'm an anchor on the morning team. And uh, I am going to read for you Walter the Farting Dog. Is by William Kotzwinkel and Glenn Murray, and is illustrated by Audrey Coleman. Now, don't laugh, because the cover says that this was a number one New York Times bestseller. More than a million copies sold, so apparently there's a lot of interest in dogs farting. We shall see. Let's hear the story of Walter, the farting dog. Betty and Billy brought Walter home from the dog pound. Nobody wanted him, said Billy. But we love him, said Betty. Well, he smells awful, said their mother. I think you better give him a bath. You see Betty and Billy with Walter there, and apparently they have a cat, too, right there. The cat's not a problem. Walter is the problem. Mother walked in and said, he still smells awful. And that's when they got their first clue. The telltale bubbles in the water. He's probably just a little nervous, said Mother, hopefully. His stomach must be upset. But Walter's stomach wasn't upset. Walter's stomach was just fine. He felt perfectly normal. He just farted a lot. See him in his bath? See him creating the bubbles in the bath in that picture? Well, he did it when he bathed. He did it when he played with Betty and Billy. He did it when he walked around the house. He did it in the dining room. He did it in the kitchen. And he did it in his sleep. See? Walter does it everywhere. That dog farts morning, noon, and night, said Father. He can't help it, Daddy, said Betty and Billy. They didn't mind Walter's farts. So what if he farts, said Billy to Betty, when they were alone in their room with Walter. Betty agreed. Walter agreed, too. He sat there looking innocently around, farting. Take him to the vet, said Father. The father is looking disapprovingly at Walter, as there is a cat on his head. Farting, said the vet, or rectal flatulence, as we say in the medical profession and prescribed a change in diet. And you can see the veterinarian really checked out Walter. They gave Walter every kind of dog food. He farted. They tried him on cat food. They gave him hot dogs, hamburgers, and lettuce and tomato sandwiches. They gave him fried chicken. They gave him rabbit food. They made him a vegetarian. No matter what that dog eats, he turns it into farts, roared Father. See, that's Walter trying just about every kind of food imaginable. Walter got the blame for everybody else's farts, too. If Uncle Irv let one slip, he just went and stood near Walter, and all he had to say was, Walter? And everyone would look at poor Walter. That's Uncle Irv. Uncle Irv, that's not right. He has to go back to the pound, said Father. No, Daddy, please, begged Biddy and Billy. Don't send Walter away. He goes tomorrow, said Father. They pleaded. Walter farted. It was all over. 
That night, Betty and Billy cried in their beds, and Walter looked at them unhappily. Oh, Walter, said Betty, you've got to stop farting. Because father's going to send you back to the pound tomorrow, said Billy. See, Walter, he's laying in his bed. He's trying desperately not to fart, but he can't help himself. Walter knew how serious the situation was. He'd never see Betty and Billy again. He resolved to hold in his farts forever. When Betty and Billy fell asleep, he walked down to the kitchen to see if there was anything around to eat. He managed to open the cupboard door with his nose and found the 25-pound bag of low-fart dog biscuits the vet had prescribed for him, which had made him fart more. Even though he knew they made him fart more, he just could not resist. He ate the entire bag. Very tasty, Walter said to himself. See? See him eating all of the dog biscuits right there? And then he went and lay down on the sofa. A gigantic gas bubble began to build inside him. This is going to be trouble, he said to himself nervously. He was afraid of what might happen if he let it go. He thought maybe the house would explode, so he kept it in. It wasn't easy. In fact, it was torture. But he had resolved never to fart again. His future depended on it. As he lay there, with his tail wrapped tightly between his legs, he heard a noise at the window. See him there, Walter desperately trying to hold in his farts? Poor Walter. He watched it slowly open. A pair of burglars came through. See these two bad guys, the burglars? They dropped silently into the kitchen. Watch out for the dog, said one of the burglars. He won't bite, said the other. He's a wimp. Walter might have bitten them, except he was so filled with gas he couldn't move. They tied a rag around his snout so that he couldn't bark. Okay, whispered the first burglar. Let's clear the place out. They took everything they could get their hands on. Walter wanted to stop them, but he was having unbearable gas pains. He rolled on his back and waved his paws in the air. He gnashed his teeth. We've got it all, said the second burglar. Let's go. And that is when Walter let it fly. Look at it. It was the worst fart of his life. It made a tremendous noise and shot him across the room. A hideous cloud filled the air. The burglars clutched their throat, unable to breathe. Look at that. With tears in their eyes, they raced for the window. They tried to grab their bag with all of the valuables in it, but their arms were too weak. Let's get out of here. They jumped out the window and ran up the block, choking and gasping for air. Still blinded by Walter's attack, they stepped into the headlights of an approaching police car. Hold it right there, said the policeman. See that? They're still in the cloud of gas from Walter. And the police officer sees them and says, stop right there. When father and mother came down in the morning, they found the open window. And they saw the bag with their valuables in it. And Walter was sitting beside it. He still had the rag tied around his snout. You'd have to say he looked heroic. He saved the silverware, cried Mother. He saved the VCR, cried Father. Good dog, Walter. You're our dog. Even if you do fart all the time. See, Mother and Dad are really happy. Mother and Father are really happy with Walter. See, he still has that rag tied around his snout there, but he's a hero. At 
And so the family learned to live with Walter, the hero dog. And that's the end of our tale. Look at that. Happy family with a farting dog. And that, my friends, is the story of Walter the farting dog. But if you look at his picture, you see that Walter is discharging gas into sort of a funnel right there. And look at the last picture. It shows it powering Walter's Wonder Park, which is 100% natural gas powered. There's the story of Walter the farting dog. Books in the mail. Sign up today. Go to Ohio Imagination Library. Org to find out more.